Howdy, it's Rick from Dreamside Out again. Election, electricity. They're similar in some ways. So I've been promising for a long time to do a video about my electrical system. So that's what I'm going to do today for you. Uh, what I need to do first though is I have to uh, take apart my bed. What I'm going to start with is the main power uh, pack, the main power center of my van, of my van's electrical system. So you're seeing the main components minus the solar panels themselves. And I'll go through and explain each one of these. So here's uh, the battery box opened up. And in here you see two VMAX batteries, 12 volt batteries, 155 amp hour deep cycle AGM batteries. Two of them hooked in parallel, see? And uh, they're hooked up to an inverter. And I also have in it two ways, well, I have several ways actually of charging these batteries. And I'll go into that in just a second. I have on top here a 1500 watt power inverter, pure sine wave inverter by Go Power. This is a very nice inverter. And I'm going to give you a link to. Uh, somebody another another youtube channel um, that helped me figure out which inverter to get i felt that buying a good inverter was a good investment because this is the the kind of thing that you don't want to have it breaking down on you I, you can get them very cheap you can get a an inverter for 150 bucks this one was a little more pricey than that it was it was close to 500 bucks for this inverter uh, I decided after watching some, some really detailed analysis of different inverters that, that the inverters are not all the same. The cheap ones are cheap. <laughs> the good ones, expensive ones, are good and that's why they cost that much. And there's various reasons why they're good. I'm not an expert enough on it to go into all those reasons, but I can point you to where you can learn more about that on your own. The bottom line, to, to make it simple, is that it's, it's all about the, the craftsmanship and the kinds of components that are used inside the inverter. Manufacturer's uh, recommendation, um, this inverter should be fused. Uh, I put a, a fuse right here in line. On the front of the inverter, it has uh, two plug-ins for 110 volt um, plug-ins. And, you know, I, I have both of these usually plugged in uh, right here. There's one, this is the other one. And what these two plug-ins do is they, they, they feed some power strips along. This is one on one side of my van. You see right here I have uh, some chargers plugged in, some lights, some other stuff. And then on the other side, uh, underneath the pillows there, <laughs> can't see them is another power strip. So those two feed two power strips and I got lots of plug-ins on each, each of these. Often during the middle of the day when the when the uh, when I'm getting maximum solar I can sit somewhere like I am right now and uh, you know be charging my batteries. I'll have the inverter turned on charging everything my cell phone using my laptop and it just it's it stays it stays at maximum charge pretty much. Uh, I'll explain the solar panels in a minute too because they're really good ones. Uh, but the the system seems to work pretty good at maximum uh, solar, and uh, I'll go into that in more detail. Okay, back inside the battery box again. I want to show you what's uh, hooked up to the battery. Um, Right here, this, this yellow cable and this 
red cable, uh, they come out of the battery and they go right down there and right up here into my distribution box. I don't have that open at the moment. I just have some screws. Uh, you know, I just pull these screws out. And inside that distribution box, that's, that's just got a, a bus bar and some fuses. And that's what powers a couple of 12 volt circuits that I have running various places. And what I run right now on these 12 volt circuits are just lights, just 12 volt lights. So that, you know, at any time, you know, without, without starting the inverter, I can turn on some 12 volt uh, LED lights. Um, so they're, they're very low, low amp output. I mean, low amp draw on the lights and they're, you know, I can run those lights for a long time. It doesn't even affect the battery hardly. Uh, but usually I have the inverter off unless I'm running 110 volts. So, and the reason for that is I don't want the, the inverter, you know, it actually draws power from the battery when it's on. It's actually pulling some, some uh, energy from the battery. So if you don't need it, you shouldn't have it on all the time. And plus you run the risk of having it heat up anyway. So. Okay, now for the methods of charging the batteries. And I'll go into that. We'll start with the uh, smart charger. I have a smart charger here uh, by IntelliPower. It's a uh, Progressive Dynamics Incorporated IntelliPower uh, recreational vehicle converter charger. You know, you have an inverter up here and a converter down here. Now, what's that for? Well, a converter allows you to plug into a, a hookup, for instance, in a, an RV park or you can hook up I can even hook this into uh, a plug-in in a house you know I'm in somebody's driveway I can plug it in and I can actually it will charge the battery um, properly with a, a trickle charge that that is regulated for the battery so that it it charges the battery properly without overcharging it or uh, um, damaging the battery in any way. I don't use this very often. I use it when I'm in a campground most of the time that has a 30 amp hookup. Okay, I can also hook it up to directly to my generator over here, which is another way of charging. So I can I can hook into a 30 amp hookup or I can run this generator. Now the way I run the generator, I think I showed this in an early video, I, I set this outside and turn it on. I very seldom have ever used the generator. I'm finding that I don't know if I even need to lug it around. I like the fact that I have it available as a backup source of, of charging. The downside to the generator, and I'm still kind of working on a way to solve this problem, is that I don't have a really good place to carry gasoline for it. You know, I don't want to put gas, obviously, inside the cabin here. Uh, so I'm going to have to come up with a mounting a gas can system on the outside like a, a Jeep can or something. Um, right now I just have the gas inside of it uh, at the moment and uh, I have a gas little gas can so if I need to run it you know I'll get just enough gas for it and put it in it but if I was going out off the grid somewhere and I wanted to have my generator I think I would need a gas can uh, mounted on the outside of the the truck and uh, then I would probably make use of it because at nighttime you might want to put a charge on your on your batteries or whatever. Just gives you another method of charging the battery in case there's no solar. Okay, so down here, um, this big silver component here is a charge controller by Renogy. And it's a, it's a maximum power point charge controller. And that is the newest technology, supposedly, in charge controllers. I think it's an excellent technology. I think it works really efficient. It, it seems to charge my battery really fast. I mean, what's, what this is for is it's, it's 40 amps. So I could 
uh, hook up two banks of, of uh, solar panels on the roof. Uh, the ones I got now are 150 watt a piece. And I could put another two of those through this same charge controller. Now if you do your research and you understand the, the role of the charge controller, the charge controller is it takes the power from the, the, the power trickle charge coming in from the solar panels and it charges the battery up to a point and then it stops. It does it 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 keeps your battery from getting overcharged. This is again, it's a very efficient one. It's the maximum power point which gets the most charge. <clears throat> out of the uh, the solar that you're getting. Okay, another reason um, I have put off this video about the uh, electrical system is because I have to get to show you, I have to get up there and show you the panels closely. And I don't have a stepladder yet. I don't have a stepladder on board, so I can't get up there and show them to you easily. So. And, and that's important because the installation of this is, is kind of interesting and I think would be useful if you're going to get a box van like this. Uh, this installation that I came up with, it, it works really well for these particular panels. I, I'm going to try to show it to you as best I can without a stepladder. Okay, now, I just tried to show you the brackets up there because, I, again, I don't have a doggone ladder to get up there and show you. So, here is uh, what you were looking at there. This is a, another bracket. I made more of these than I needed because I'm expecting to expand my system a little bit at some point. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. It seems like it's working pretty good right now, but I, I planned ahead so that if I wanted to put two more panels up there, I could. This is the bracket I came up with. Now, if you're if you're gonna use a truck like this, this is the kind of bracket that works perfect. Um, what I did here is I have uh, a couple of pieces of angle iron. Okay, this is kind of a close-up of the angle iron I used, and I'll give you some dimensions here. This is just, uh, you know, that's a two inch approximately it's two inch angle iron basically is what it is it's just all the same size pieces there's one two three pieces it's welded together <clears throat> into one piece pretty much um, and I just made this piece just the right size to carry the cross members these holes are drilled so that I can I put self-tapping screws into the side rails. Okay, on the roof, it's kind of hard to do this. Film it and do it and hold it at the same time. Um, I have the bracket, and on top of the bracket, I have aluminum angles right here, which uh, this angle holds the. What do you call those things? Solar panels. <laughs> it holds the solar panels in place and the solar panels are screwed in from this side. And I have one of these in the front of the solar panel and I have room to put another one here so I can pick up the back of the next bank of solar panels if I want to. And th this piece is in turn drilled and bolted right onto this. It turns out that this is the exact height you need to span the width of the roof of this van because the the roof of this van is arched it's not flat so you have to raise it up on the edges to get over the top of it that's why I had to build these brackets it was first just to hold it on but secondly to raise it a little bit to get over the arch of the roof okay now let me go up and look uh, show you the back the brackets in the back So, if I can talk, if you can hear me, 
This bracket is welded on to another piece down here, a smaller angle iron welded together. It's bolted to the flange that was already there. And then this piece here is the piece that um, is the actual bracket that comes with the solar panels. So that just, this receives this bracket and then it's bolted in with uh, high lock nuts on there. And I have two of those on each panel in the back. And that raises it again above so that it uh, clears the roof arch. Now one more thing to, to, is this cover plate here. This is where the, the wires come off of the panels and go in through a hole that I drilled in the side there. And I just, I put that cover on there to protect the wires so they're just not hanging out uh, in the air and rub against stuff. It's just a piece of aluminum that I found and I made a pattern out of a piece of cardboard and then I traced it onto the aluminum and bent the aluminum into shape and it, it worked pretty good. So the, the wires, you know, coming off the roof, they, they come in over here somewhere, right about here, and they're running along the top. It's the black wire right there, and then I just ran it down the side. It's kind of an ugly installation just running outside there. I suppose if I planned ahead better, I could have run those wires under the wall or something. But I don't know. I just wanted to be able to get at them easy. I wanted to be able to change it around easy if I need to. And uh, I may end up running another set of wires anyway. This, this charge controller will accept um, another set of panels that size. And then I will have maxed out the, the charge controller, I think. If I add another, any more panels, if I go up to four, uh, six panels on the roof, I can go up to six panels on the roof if I want. If I go up to six panels, I'm going to have to add a charge controller. Um, to handle all that. But I don't even, I don't think I'm ever going to need to go there. I've, I've been getting by fine with this system. In fact, it's almost overkill. Okay, that's a summary of my electrical system. And I hope you, uh, hope it, it helped you. Um, the word electricity is similar to the word election. I don't know if there's any connection between the root words, but Here's some thoughts I have about the election. There's no need to be afraid. Because you can cast the true vote at any time. You've had the power of the vote all along. And that vote is this. You can vote right now to be the kind of person you know you should be, regardless of who the president is. Because then you're casting a vote in a kingdom that's bigger. And in that one, nobody can rule your spirit except your creator. And if you live in a vehicle, vote with your wheels, baby. <laughs>